Hey. 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 I didn't even see them here. <laughs> I came on set today. Even though the cameras are set up for a three shot, I came up to be by myself. Because <laughs> I'm lonely. Are we in the way? And I'm scared. But then I looked over and saw my friends, Charles Peltier and, and Stephen Foster. I go, oh my God, Charles and Stephen. <laughs> They're here. You guys never let me down. Thank you. You welcome, never let us down. Welcome to the show. Thank I you. I will not. Uh, you did a film called That's Opportunity Knocking. That's right. Where did the idea for the film come from? Steve Charles I. Peltier. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, so Steve and I have done a lot of uh, theater work. Right. I direct a lot of theater, and we've both been actors in theater. Right. I hadn't done much film, but he had. Uh, but I had a, um, we were in a play at the Hollywood Fringe Festival uh, that um, was written by another friend of ours. And the director of that play was a guy named Thomas Annawalt. Mm -hmm. We all went out for drinks after the production one night, and he started telling us about this anecdote that he had in an uh, uh, apartment he was living in in New York with two roommates, came home. The place was kind of messed up, but he uh, really wanted to make it with his with his roommate. So uh, they didn't really pay much attention to it. Ended up going into the sack. Uh, woke up the next morning and the place had been robbed. <laughs> but what was interesting was the place, if if it had been ransacked when they got home, then the whole time they were on the couch, the burglars had been hiding somewhere in wow. the apartment. So... I thought that's just a great idea for a short film. And he said like a thriller. I'm like, no, a comedy. That's it'd have to be. How long what was the time space between for the movie? How long does it last? That's a twenty two minute film. See, the thing with me is when I make love to a woman, it, I have to take time. I have to really, really take time to make it right in every aspect. So if those robbers had come into my house, that whole act would take at least ninety seconds. <laughs> they wouldn't have gotten away with much. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, we're having fun up here, but we haven't met Stephen Foster yet. What's up? Hey, what are you, you doing? doing, man? I'm doing this. I'm, I'm going to say this. something to you two that I don't say very much to many because I don't feel this way. Te quiero mucho, my vida. Te quiero mucho. What does that mean? Means I love you, my heart. Oh, te amo. Oh, te amo. Now you come back and spend. What does that mean? I don't know. You know, what, you know what? <laughs> Te amo. My, you, my whole Spanish vocabulary is based on Madonna songs. So oh, mine is all. based on working in restaurants. So you, you get a lot of laves las manos and donde esta. Baño. Of, yeah, baño. <laughs> El baño. Hey, um, so you were telling us about you. About me, I'm an actor and a writer, and um, I love doing indie films mm -hmm. and uh chuck wrote this uh particular part for me um i i was not in the original scenario of the robbers and the roommates uh but chuck um or charles um said you know wouldn't it be funny if there was an, another roommate there and no one knows about him mm -hmm. the roommates or the robbers and what if uh you play a psychotic guy who tried to kill himself because you're in love with one of the roommates. Wow. And I said, and as an actor, you always want to look for great parts, great material, no matter where they come from. And um, and as soon as Chuck wrote it, or Charles wrote it, I said, I could do that. I, I, I want to play a psychotic person who's straight out of the booby hatch. Right. And, right. and who has a secret crush on one of the roommates. I want to play that. So nice. that that's what made it fun. And, and Charles is the director. He knows he's watched my work over the years and he knows what I can do right. and the, um, that I'm not limited because I'm only five feet tall and I have this. You're a voice. giant to me. And and he's not he doesn't see any limits on the characters that I can play. Well, look at guys like Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I worked with him. I've been places where he is. I'm not going to say we're friends because he calls me a Momo. <laughs> he calls me Nikki Momo. Momo. Why does he call you Nikki he said Momo? His sister, yeah. He said his sister, because my middle name's Dominic. But oh, he, he said, I said, what's a Momo, Joe? And he said, my sister used to call it weird, you know, silly people, a Momo. I go, well, thanks for that, Joe Pesci. I never once mentioned his height. <laughs> <laughs> but he came at me. But you don't see his height. 
No. His talent is so great, you don't see the height. Yeah. You don't see it. You see Joe Pesci. You yeah. know, and I've seen a lot of performers. I don't think stature matters in that regard, right? I uh, think it's the bigness of how you play the role. True. And, and also how you perform in life. You know, that's a, I know a lot of giants, man. They're nowhere near six feet. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and but the good, the good thing about Charles is like, the way, if you guys watch the movie, the way he frames me with the robbers, you get to see how tiny I am. And that is, that is, because I'm not. I just went through uh, all that crap. For I know, but, but wait, wait, there's a point. I'm a little Lilliputian. No, but as an Check actor. Check this out. <laughs> but as an actor, I always, in Hollywood, um, you know how they love to typecast you. Yeah, of course. So I always go out for the little people roles. And I'm not a little people. I'm five feet tall. Right. And so to find parts that are legitimate and real that I can play. Well, that's what, that was it, my next question. There are no parts that are legitimate and real to your reality because I'm sure that when you both were growing up, you wanted to play these characters, these roles, these parts. And those are not the parts that come your way. Right? It's right. Well, I'm not a, I don't want to make anything up. I'm saying it's the rare performer that yeah. finds him or herself in yeah. the role that they dreamt of as a child. Now, of course, you have your Rachel McAdams and the rest of them who get that. They get those shots, Carmen Diaz yeah. and and the rest of them. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, because he's producing his own film. He says, yeah. I'm going to create the roles. Yeah. You know, American Sniper. And, and I don't know what he was doing in that 70s film. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but American Hustle? American Hustle, Hustle, another silly endeavor. Um. But do most actors get the role they, man, I would love to do that. Do they? Or was it just me? You do. You have people write stuff for you. And I'm of that, that lucky um, age and type where a lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, uh, like Charles, write stuff for me. For they know my voice. They know my size. And they know that whatever character they put me in, I can play 100%. And for me, it's always not about me, Stephen. It's always about the character. I whatever love character, that. Whatever role I'm given, I attack it like a tiger. Because it, I grew up watching Carol Burnett. Uh -huh. And I wanted to be a method actor in terms of comedy. So I, it's always about playing the character 100%. Gilda great. Radner, um, Carol Burnett, they all played whatever character they were doing 100%. Hundred percent. Harvey Corman. Harvey oh. Corman. Gene Vicky Wild, Lawrence. Vicky. Uh, Madeline Kahn. Madeline Kahn. Um, and uh, and so that is what I like to do as an actor. I like to just play the character one hundred percent. So I get, I have people write stuff for me, and that's exciting. Charles, what's it like writing and producing in Hollywood? Well, I spend a lot of time. Do you feel like you're Hollywood? <laughs> well, we... now because there's only one definition of that: someone who's in Hollywood making movies. Right, right. That's true. So yeah. you're a Hollywood filmmaker. What's that like? What's I, that like? I literally do live in in Hollywood Hills, and mm -hmm. I make films. Well, I spent my whole life in theater, and the reason I ha have spent my whole life in theater is that uh, it it always seemed like you you get uh, you get paid for what you do artistically. Right. And you also, I also get you know paid uh, financially too, but I get paid artistically for what I do. So what do I mean by that? I have so many friends uh, who have written screenplays, and I've written screenplays, uh, and sold them, but nothing's ever been made. So when you write a screenplay, even if you sell it and it doesn't get made, you have no artistic payment. You have no artistic reward for that. Uh, uh, let me theater... correct Charles here. <laughs> I once got paid $99 for a script. I used that $99 to take my kids to McDonald's and jump and play or wherever the place was. <laughs> I've never seen such happy children. There you go. So my artistic I stand pay is in, no, that's, that's my response. But for you, I want to understand it because you're right. There is no artistic payment because it wasn't done. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not finished for you. Yeah. So when I started in this, in this industry, it was impossible to make an independent film. We just didn't have the technology, right? Mm -hmm. So theater was a, a place where I could write and put something on stage and, and, and direct it and get great actors and make a beautiful piece of art. Right. Well, now with technology the way it is and with, for example, your festival the way it is, 
it's completely different. You it's, can you it, it, it's it's almost like there's a 99 seat version of films, and actually that's why I call my production company 99 seat films because in theater a 99 seat film is or 99 seat play is is a, a play that you do because you want to do it because you have a passion for it. And how now your, that exists in film, how was your screening? Your screening was sensational. What was the feedback screen? like? It was amazing. Uh, it was a like half full house and wonderful audience. They got every joke. They even got the small little jokes in between and they they applauded like mad afterwards. So it, it was very exciting wow. to see something that you've put a lot of heart and intention into come to life and mm. the audience love it. it. It's a very rewarding thing. That's nice. So that's that's kudos to the festival. That's yeah. it. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. We're going to talk about some more stuff. And this you think that's funny? I do. You got a, we got the funniest crew in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> nothing is uh, is beyond uh, uh, broaching. No subject. What's next for you guys? Uh, I've got a film uh, or a script that uh, I uh, am in development now that I really want to uh, come out with. Um, and Stephen is is uh, gosh, I think you've met. 14 people at this felt this festival that that want to put you in films yeah. yeah 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 uh, you know what's next is chuck and i want to develop um a couple of scripts that we have um that chuck had mentioned that we had written that are kind of um never made it and so we want to uh, uh we want good things to happen with that's so opportunity knocking and then from that we want to use that as our calling card as sort of the comedy team and uh, develop more um, projects. And of course, I want to act in more indie films. And because indie films give me gives me the permission to be kind of crazy and uh, over the top, but on camera. Because in theater, you never capture, you don't really capture anything that's permanent. It's mm -hmm. all live. Right. And what I love about film and even webisodes and this new technology going on is that you get to create a bigger body of work that's permanent. It's very permanent and you can't get it off. Yeah. Um, no matter what you do. So it's there. <laughs> for better or for worse. Best director yeah. in Europe. I'm going to give you some questions real okay. quick. I want you guys to answer. Best director. Uh, Milos Forman. Um, uh, Christopher Guest. Favorite female performer, actress. Judy Garland. Betty Davis. Favorite male <laughs> actor or performer. Uh, they're all old. I'm gonna, I only I'm gonna, ask for one. I'm going to go with Humphrey Bogart. Peter O'Toole. <laughs> nice. We watch the classics. Hey, yeah. you tell. I'm asking, hey. so I'm asking the questions. Hey. <laughs> and that's where I learned my craft. Give me my room. <laughs> Favorite film? Probably Amadeus. Uh, I love that film. Um, I would say All About Eve. What is the future of Hollywood? I think the future of Hollywood is going to be more egalitarian, more equal than it has ever been. I think it's going to be less what controlled. What did you just say? <laughs> it's going to be less controlled by the oligarchy of studios and more controlled by people being able to access YouTube uh, and other platforms so that every filmmaker that wants to be a filmmaker can be a filmmaker. Do you think that's a good thing? I think it's a great thing. Young man, what's the future of the industry? Us. Oh, this guy is good. You are good. Where can I learn more about you guys? Is there a website? That's opportunitynockingthemovie.com is, is the website for the movie. Yeah. Um, and I have a website called chuckpelletier.com. And cstephenfoster.com. What a pleasure having you here. Pleasure being here. It goes here. fast, doesn't it? It what? does. Yeah. It goes fast. Thank you, it guys. Does. Life goes fast. Uh,